All right, let's see if I can remember how to do this. So I'm back and the Tour de France is over. Astana's Vincenzo Nibali won by a significant margin, so now it is apparently the duty of every real cycling fan on the internet to decide why he, and whatever other rider you don't like, is obviously doping. Coffee. <laughs> Yes, like the angry men who shouted cyclists out the windows of their pickup trucks, you know you're right. Why bother attempting some sort of comprehensive analytic approach when you can just cherry-pick data that already supports your existing feelings? And I mean, really, why bother taking a look at benchmarks of historical data or best-guess estimates on wattage when the answers are always such resounding... maybes? I mean, let's face it, that makes it so much harder to be outraged. Asking people to think about stuff is never gonna bring in the RTs. Conversely, I'm kind of skeptical of the people who say that two French riders on the podium give them hope. I mean, other than the fact that the French are obviously incapable of doping. F Festina, that was a Danish team, right? Norway? I mean, is this... does this qualify as analysis? Like this AFP piece saying that this is the year the French retook the tour from the British? I mean, have I time warped back to the Hundred Years' War? Am I sitting around a campfire listening to Dave Brailsford prattle on about St. Crispin's Day? Is he which hath no stomach to this fight a sly reference to Wiggins? Anyway, the women's Tour de France took place in my absence, all two hours of it, and it also provoked commentary. Not so much about eventual winner Mariana Vos and her excellent move up along the barriers at 1k to go, or about how second place finisher Liv Giants Kristen Veeld looked a little flat after not racing for a month, but about whether or not Vos can actually be compared to Eddie Merckx. I believe the con argument in this case can be distilled to because men, but actually that's quite progressive compared to some of the Facebook comments on this Bicycling Magazine interview with Giant General Manager Elisa Walk. And let's keep in mind this is an industry that routinely asks itself, with a straight face, why there aren't more women riding bikes. In less depressing news, this week's t-shirt donor is BC Italia, a bike tour company that prides itself on offering custom itineraries to individuals, couples, and small groups. Through cycling, wine tours, and cultural exploration, BC Italia guests, both cyclists and non-cyclists, can truly experience the trip of a lifetime. There's a link to their website in the video description. For those of you who think the media is complicit in whatever thing you find to be wrong about cycling, now is your chance to change all that because Velo News is apparently for sale. And yes, the joke has already been made about me taking over. For the record, I have about as much interest in working for a print publication as I do in a third Danilo DeLuca comeback, but if you're interested in burning a few million dollars to spin off the website, I am pretty easy to get in touch with. First order of business would be a fairly deep content reorganization, starting with transfer stories. I'm a little tired about digging for real news between stories of who might be going where and what team may not actually be happening next season. I mean, really, what's the point of these this-may-be-happening headlines when I can just follow drunken Twitter rants from Oleg Tinkoff? Heck, maybe you could even try to crowdfund your Velo News takeover. That's what Specialized Lululemon is doing as both of their title sponsors are taking off after the end of this season. This is, of course, despite Evelyn Stevens' recent win at Turing and Runfart. You think maybe Cycling News results only coverage of that particular event had something to do with those sponsors reconsidering their investment? And if this is the part where you're going to be like, Oh, can't justify spending on women's cycling because economics. Should I point out that Podium Cafe managed to produce a stage-by-stage -stage recap and supplement it with the appropriate third-party videos for free? I mean, how hard would it be for Cycling News to set up an agreement exchanging some portion of ad revenue for syndication rights to Podium Cafe's content? But hey, if you think your 200 words on Valverde's San Sebastian win will be that much better than everyone else's, don't let me stop you. Just, you know, don't think that saying it saved him face after missing the tour podium is some sort of value-added analysis. Likewise to your non-article about the UCI's non-press release about non-suspended rider Roman Kreuzinger becoming actually suspended in anticipation of his becoming for real suspended in the near future. Or worst of all, your clickbait piece on the reopening of Marco Pantani's suicide. Doesn't really have a damn thing to do with cycling, but hey, maybe you can get a lifetime movie out of it. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that was The Week in Bike. Thank <laughs> you.